Hello and welcome once again to our online worship for Norwich United Church for Sunday, July 12, 2020. This is the sixth Sunday after Pentecost, placing us in ordinary time on our church calendar. We usually decorate our worship area with the colored green symbolizing hope, life, and joy during this season. My name is Don Jones and I am one of two licensed lay worship leaders who call Norwich United Church our faith community. Kathleen will led last week's worship and will be leading next week's worship and will continue alternating throughout the rest of the summer. Council held a meeting on Monday on Zoom and has written a letter to everyone updating us on stuff that has been going on. Uh, it touches on the reopening committee, the, our minister search team, summer camp, our September 27th anniversary service, our financial picture, and gives us a big gives a big shout out to our shepherding elders, and offers a library report including how we can continue borrowing books. Um, the letter also gives us an update on our 2020 history book that is being created by Marie Avey. If you receive the e-newsletter, you've probably already see, received a copy of this letter. If not, plans are in the works to get one to you. If you want to ensure that you get a copy, um, please contact Linda at the office to make sure we have your most recent contact information. And even though that NUC can't con continue our regular services at this time, our programs or initiatives until further notice, we're still working behind the scenes. You may be wondering how you can make your donations to the church. You can mail them to the church or make arrangements with Diana or Linda. You will be receipted as before. This might be the perfect opportunity for you to try the PAR program, the pre-authorized remittance. I would like to take this opportunity to remind you that we are still collecting photos taken and memories made at Norwich United Church. We're collecting used stamps and the Norwich Foodland tapes. Our e-waste collection program has been suspended until our church building is reopened to all. Oh, and the summer camp's next Vista order date is August 2nd. And now I offer this acknowledgement of the stewardship of the lands we are worshiping on together today by the generations of First Nations people. May we learn to walk together. Now is our time to worship. So I invite you to come wherever you are, come whenever you are, and come just as you are. Come and join me as we step out of the crowd and out of our isolation and step closer together as we step into Jesus' boat. Come, let us listen and hear. Let us pray. Lord, we would grow with you. New shoots reaching out, hands stretched upward, like leaves newly formed, soaking up your light and warmth. Lord, we would grow with you. Lord, we would grow with you in the sunshine and rain, in darkness and light, in cold days and summer days, from springtime to winter. Lord, we would grow with you. Lord, we would grow with you and bring forth fruit that is pleasing to you, fed by your living water and giving sustenance to others. Lord, we would grow with you. Amen.
Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we remember with gratitude those people who generously sowed the seeds of faith in our lives. Above all, we recognize how you have blessed our lives with the gift of the Holy Spirit, so that our faith has miraculously and mysteriously grown. We confess the times we failed to involve ourselves in planting any seeds of faith in the lives of others. The times when our personal agendas have become more important than yours. The times when we have denied others the opportunity to expand their faith through our lack of interest or involvement. The times when our lives have become so entangled with the values of the world that we forget what you have said and done and promised. Lord Jesus Christ, we know that when we have become disconnected from you, our lives become parched and unfruitful, and our faith becomes stunted and dry. Bless and renew our lives, we pray, so that we remain connected to you at all times and in all places, strengthening our faith to expand and growing strongly and vigorously to bear the fruit of your mercy, your love, and your undying life. Amen. No ifs, no ands, no buts. There is now no condemnation, period. God answers all of our hurts, all our wrongs, and all our sins with salvation and love. Believe this good news, my friends. Let's pray. We are stunned by your grace and embraced in your love, forgiving God. We lift our thanks to you. Amen. We have two joys this morning. The first joy, well, many of you know that our, our NUC summer camps are, are awesome and a lot of kids come into them all, all summer long every year and we haven't been able to do that this year. But um, the summer camp is pleased to announce that past leaders, Lexi and Tricia, are, coming, are providing a virtual summer camp uh, through the Facebook and uh, NUC camp uh, website. And uh, if you know any kids who could you some fun this summer? Have them check it out and spread the news. And let's remember to pray for our counselors and uh, all our virtual campers. Our second joy is that there are so many birthdays and a couple wedding anniversaries this week and last that I'm not going to name everybody. I'm just going to offer this old Irish blessing as a gift to you from Norwich United Church on your special day. So may love and laughter be yours and warm your heart and home. May good and faithful friends be yours wherever you may roam. May peace and plenty bless your world with joy that long endures. And may all life's passing seasons bring the best to you and yours. And now remember, if you've got a special event like a birthday or an anniversary that you want to share, do let Linda in the office know. Thank you. And now Matthew's got a minute for mission. Hello everybody, it's me and Matthew Jones again. And yes, I did get a haircut recently, thank heavens I finally got around to it. I am here today to once again read your mission and service. The term partnership can describe a wide range of relationships undertaken by the church. The work of the church is accomplished through working with others. Some full ministries of the church including community-based organizations, as well as thorough relationships with organizations and coalitions we know as national partners. Mission and Service supports partnerships with community ministries across Canada. In addition to congregations, the church includes ministries such as camps, campus ministries, and community and social justice ministries that support people seeking basic needs such as food, clothing, shelter, 
advocacy services, and spiritual guidance. There are over 60 community ministries. Community ministries are often full ministries and expressions of the church, while some have developed into community-based organizations that partner with a variety of local government and non-governmental organizations. Through these relationships, the church is able to faithfully and more fully make a difference in the lives of vulnerable people. These ministries call the church to risk new forms of life and membership, to be willing to be transformed by those on the margins of society, and to join them as the place where God is present and active. Tractor point line. Sorry about that, I just wanted the tractor to pass by. The noise would be picked up by the camera and stuff, so. Through partner relationships, the church engages in advocacy and justice, research and policy, education and theolo theological reflection, congregational engagement for justice making, and community support. If mission and service giving is already a regular part of your life, thank you so much. If you have not given, please join me in making mission and service giving a regular part of your life of faith. Loving our neighbor is at the heart of mission and service. Thank you for your time. Once, when Jacob was cooking a stew, Esau came in from the field, and he was exhausted. And Esau said to Jacob, Let me eat some of that red stew, for I am exhausted. Therefore his name was called Edom. Jacob said, Sell me your birthright now. And Esau said, I'm about to die. What use is a birthright to me? Jacob said, Swear it to me now. 
So he swore to him and sold his birthright to Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and lentil stew, and he ate and drank and rose and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. Our second reading comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 13, the parable of the sower. That same day Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea, and great crowds gra gathered about him, so that he got into a boat and sat down, and the whole crowd stood on the beach, and he told them many things in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some of the seeds fell along the path, and the birds came and devoured them. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and immediately they sprang up, since they had no depth of soil. But the sun, when the sun rose, they were scorched. Since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and produced grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. He who has ears, let him hear. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what has been sown in his heart. This is what was sown along the path. And as for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures for a while, and when tribulation or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately he falls away. As for was sown among the thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and it proves unfruitful. As for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understand it. He indeed bears fruit and yields in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. Here ends our readings. Thanks be to God. God, be in our hearts and in our thinking, in our minds and in our feeling. Be in our ears and in our listening in our eyes and in our seeing, and teach us what we need to understand from you today. Amen. Parable of the Sower and the Seed. We often hear this one we talked about in church and Sunday school. Maybe it's because someone planting seeds is something that we can all identify with. Or maybe it's because it's one of the first parables recorded in the Bible. Or Maybe it's because Matthew follows up the parable with Jesus explaining the metaphors he used to the disciples. Whatever the reason for its frequency, some of us will have the impulse to tune out and say, yeah, yeah, the farmer and the seed, some grew, some didn't, let's move on. But before we do, let's pause and wonder if Jesus' parsing of the parable wasn't included for us, didn't connect the dots and make it so simple to understand and talk about, would we be able to understand it at all? Would it be like so many of the other parables, open to too many other interpretations? Would we be like those in the crowd Jesus was teaching and think, ooh, pretty story, or plant on good soil if you want a good crop? Thank you, Captain Obvious. For those of us hearing this story for the first time, this teaching story, is it really that simple to understand after all? When Jesus described his illustrations to the disciples, he didn't focus on the sower or the seeds, but on the soils the seeds landed on and likened the soils to the people who were hearing his teaching. So let's wonder anew and dig a little deeper. The first soil he land, the seeds landed on was the hard, well-trodden path then the seeds didn't even get a chance. The birds came along and devoured them. Jesus describes the path soil as people who hear God's word but don't understand it. And as they don't understand it, the evil one steals it out of their heart. 
This is one of the reasons we have a sermon or meditation, a reflection, whatever you want to call it, after the reading of scripture in our worship service. So we can explore and interpret and better understand what we have read or heard together. So that after our time together, we can take the word with us in our hearts and minds and not just have it bounce off us and be blown away. Our openness to God's gardening can depend on our life situation. Sometimes we can make our hearts too hard for God's love to grow in us. We can tune out God's message, not listen, and ignore it. Remember when we talked about skipping this one? If we'd done that, we would have missed out on this opportunity to plant God's word in our hearts and grow together. Hard hearts make tough soil. We also harden our hearts when we think we have no value, that there's nothing special about us, so that no one needs to care about us. And nothing can be further from the truth. We are each precious and unique to God. As Bob and Larry, two very wise veggies, put it, God made you special and loves you very much. God loved us so much that even before we were born, Jesus became God with us to reconcile us with God and adopt us as siblings in the Holy Family. Let's embrace these seeds of love and let them break up the soil in our hearts so we can be better soil. The second soil the seeds landed on was the rocky soil in which the seeds sprouted and grew quickly but died when the sun came out because the soil underneath and among the rocks was far too thin to support a sturdy nourishing root system. Jesus describes the rocky soil as those who immediately receive the word with much joy but who give it up when difficulties arise in their lives because of the word. They have no roots or support system. When we hear or read the scriptures, we need to dig deep and root it in our beings. Because if we don't, when we experience challenges, taunting, or worse, because of our belief in the love of God and our understanding of the Bible, we will give up and quit. Bad habits, friends, or co-workers who mock our beliefs and make it difficult to live our faith are a couple examples. And what about the un unjust laws? Instead of digging these rocks out so that we can be better, deeper soil to receive and grow God's word, we often collect more of these things. Esau, being firstborn, was heir to Isaac's wealth, rights, responsibilities, leadership position, and more. But one day he came home hungry and traded it all for an easy meal. His value for his birthright was so shallow. Right now, attending and participating in worship isn't easy. We have to use technology, much of which is new and confusing to us, or we try to go it alone. For me, the onset of the COVID lockdown meant more hours and new tasks at work, so the more vulnerable co-workers could stay safe at home. And the cancellation of my cataract surgery. I had been unable to read for many months, and I really missed playing music in my hymn books and reading from my Bible. When we re were required to take a hiatus from worshiping together, I really began to struggle with the rocks of vision loss, isolation, and exhaustion. I felt my spiritual roots drying out and my soil getting thin. But now that I am praying and worshiping with you in these online services, Hearing the script, hymns played and the scriptures being read and explored, I feel better grounded and better supported. I hope these seeds of worship are nourishing you too. The cares of this world have great power to crowd out God's word in our lives. God, or Jesus in the parable, described the third kind of soil as good soil, but was crowded with thorns and weeds. And he described that as people who heard the word of the Lord and rejoiced in it. But all the cares of the world just kind of crowded in and squeezed it out and choked the life out of them. So cares about things like our health and our safety, our finances, sustenance, shelter, sleep, employment, education, transportation, social justice, ecological justice, 
societal pressures, deadlines, bills, meetings, loved ones. Oh, the list of cares goes on and on. Your list will be different than mine. But finding time for being focused and with God is really hard to do these days. It takes preparation and intent. For instance, in the letter to the Galatians, we read we should rejoice always and pray without ceasing and give thanks in all circumstances. So as a young mom, I planned a daily devotion each morning when I woke up. It worked well. Some days the kids got up before I did, and I missed that time. So I promised myself I'd have it later while they were taking a nap or when they went to bed. So they'd skip the nap, and often, more often than not, I was asleep before they were. It's easy to skip even something simple like grace at mealtime when everyone's coming and going at different times to the dinner table and the food's getting cold. Get every, getting everyone ready to together on time to get to church is still a challenge. And with the convenience of having the service recorded so we can worship anytime, it's so easy to say, oh, I'll watch it later. Maybe while I'm cooking supper or when I'll listen to it while I'm driving in the car. Thereby dividing our time with God and sharing it with the world. With all those worldly cares pressing in, it's so difficult to hold the holy ground. And little by little, God gets squeezed out and becomes less and less important in our lives. So let's try weeding a little patch of so time in our week and improve our soil so that we can spend time letting Jesus plant God's word in us and help us grow in understanding. The final soil Jesus mentioned was the good soil. No rocks, no weeds, not tamp tramped down. The soil ready to receive seeds and allow them to grow full fruit and dig deep roots. Jesus used this soil to illustrate the people who hear the word of the kingdom and understand it. They take the message they have received and they run with it. Things happen. Hearts were warmed. When we gather as a faith community, do we have a soil of an open heart toward Jesus and his teaching? Are we allowing his word to break into our closed and weary hearts? As Christians, I think we all want to think of ourselves as being good soil. And I want to, and sometimes I believe I am. But there are other times when I can see myself as one of the other three. For a moment, let's consider ourselves as the field in which the word of God is scattered. Can you recognize barren places and dry patches and fertile parts in your life? What to, to what should we pay attention and work on first? Some days were the path, some days the rocks, other times the thorns or thistles, and at the best of times were the good earth. Do we understand Jesus' teachings any better now? What else do we need to think about? What are the fruits in which the word of God is producing in our lives and in our families and in our community? Thirty. 60 or 100 times fold. Now obviously we haven't taken the time to explore everything that this parable can teach us. So let's take a few minutes to listen to the Spirit and let the seeds of the Word settle in our hearts and in our minds. One of the ways we can respond to God's word is through prayer for compassion and caring for others. 
And so now I invite you to join me in prayer. Let us pray. The seed of the kingdom is forever being sown into our lives, our world, O oh God. But it doesn't always take root. Sometimes it fails to find a place to grow. And so we pray for ourselves and others when life makes us hard and resistant like a well-trodden path, where old habits and old systems and old patterns of thinking keep your message from growing. For ourselves and for others when we become so immersed in the short-lived, shallow, rock-hiding soil of the moment, where your life is too easily blown away by the wind. For ourselves and for others, when our fears, insecurities, desires, and self-absorption tangle like thorns around your grace and choke it into silence. We pray also for your blessing to rest on Lexi and Trish and all of our virtual summer camp campers. We pray for those around the world and close to home who are challenged by homelessness, by hunger, by illness, by insufficient employment or wages. We pray for those awaiting surgery and those struggling with needs that they know best. We plead your mercy be poured on those who are living in fear and danger. And we pray so much for your, your guidance for congregations who are seeking ministers at this time. Thank you, God, once more for opening our eyes to see and our ears to hear and opening our hearts to care. Help us to reach out as best we can with compassion to others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We come once again to our time of offering. God invites us to be generous with our time, our talents, and our resources so that God's word spreads in the world and bears fruit in each life it touches. Once more, let us look into our hearts and seek out that which we can offer to God's loving service. Seek that seed within us so that we can encourage it to grow by sharing it for God's glory. And once we've found it, Let's offer it with joy. Let us give joyfully and generously, sowing seeds of the kingdom of God.
we offer may not seem significant in a world of so much caring God, but we pray that they may become seeds of hope, of grace, of change, of life to all those around us. Amen. And now we come to the close of another of our worship times together. And before you go, I'd like to give you this blessing. The sower scattered the seed, not afraid of where it went. Some of it landed on rocks, some on sand, some on insufficient soil, some on good ground. The sower did not withhold any of the seed. It was joyfully scattered broadcast widely to the whole of creation. God has placed the seed of love and forgiveness in your heart. Go into God's world with joy, telling the good news of God's abundant of lavish love for all creation. Go to be a witness to all the miraculous possibilities for hope and peace. Amen. <laughs>